Hi, good morning. Okay, so this is the last lecture. Um, and you guys all know, right, we have an alternative exam. Um, December 16, which is this Friday morning, start 9, right? 9, yeah, 9 to 12, 11. And then we have also regular uh, exam, 21st, uh, 1.30, start at 1.30. 3.30, all the same room, right, in, the, in this room. So, uh, in, I mean, we don't have a sign-up system. You can see we have a larger capacity. So uh, everyone, if you wanted to take earlier, and you just can come December 16, right? Uh, OK, so um, I think last time uh, we already talked about the, um, you know, aer aerobic metab exercise, and uh, give an example, marathon. Um, and we also um, talk about field utilization during aer aerobic and exercise, and, and RQ, which is uh, a measurement of the um, field utilization. And so we should be able to uh, tell which um, energy field that muscle you utilize uh, more or, or most depend on the RQ value. Um, what else we covered, I think. Uh, uh, now we, yeah. So now let's talk about the um, recreational and versus elite runners, you know, chain on chain uh, runners could have a, a different field utilization. Uh, we also mentioned after training, uh, the oxygen consumption capacity can be increased by oxygen consumption increase. Then can that means that the after training that you will be able to utilize more fat, uh, fatty acids or fat for energy um, because of you know and, and also you know the, the adaptation right physiological adaptation to uh, training or exercise, you increase the um, cardiovascular systems and, you know, to be able to uh, get more oxygen and be able to do more uh, oxidative metabolism. Um, so if we compare recreational uh, versus uh, elite um, runners, so recreational uh, runners usually have a gradual reduction in running efficiency. So means that you know at the beginning they perform uh, fine, uh, but as the uh, exercise support, you know uh, continues, that they start feeling uh, fatigue and decrease you know um, performance. And the reason, uh, because of the fuel utilization switch, is more uh, significant in the recreational runner. For example, uh, from uh, utilization from the fuel utilization from carbohydrate in the beginning to the fat in the last part of the race. Uh, so mean that uh, in the, um, the later stage of the uh, uh, race or game that the recreational runner uh, tend to uh, tend to rely on more fat oxid uh, uh, utilization. And remember I mentioned, uh, during exercise, uh, as the exercise intensity increase, or during the later stage of exercise, the fat utilization is decreased, right? So then that means that during the later stage, uh, runners rely on more carb for the ATP production. Um, so the recreation runner also have a lower uh, glycogen storage, so that so, so in, during the later stage, a uh, re recreation runner um, rely on more fat fatty acids um, and also have a lower uh, glycogen content uh, in the muscle. So that means they uh, usually were not able to uh, pr produce ATP efficiently and to meet the uh, needs during the intensity uh, exercise in the later stage. Uh, and also have a type of two um, X fibers recruited uh, during the first hour's race. So recruited type of two X fibers earlier 
we know that a type of 2X fiber is the anaerobic type of fibers, right? So it does the anaero anaerobic metabolism and, and mostly utilize the carb as carbohydrate as the energy and produces more lactic acid. So that is the most important reason that causing the fatigue, you know, uh, uh, during the exercise. Um, and also the capacity for uh, fat utilization is small because of the fiber. You know, they have a more type of two fibers. The gluteid probably have a less type of A, uh, type of 1A fibers. So they have a less uh, capacity for uh, fat oxidation because of the, again, the fibers composition is different, right, in the uh, literation runner. And, and also have a lower uh, uh, glycogen uh, storage. And elite runners, and compared to recreation runner, um, usually have a, a gradual, I mean the gradual reduction in running efficiency is kind of small. So it means that the uh, you know you be able to uh, be efficiently running and throughout the whole period of exercise time. Um, so they be able to constantly use a few mixture uh, with we be able to use both fat and carbohydrate as the energy and with less uh, significant switch of the fuel utilization during the uh, entire period of the race, right? So, um, and because of, we, we mentioned you know, after training that you can increase the, uh, uh, you know, oxygen uh, capacity, consumption oxygen, oxidative capacity, so be able to uh, utilize the uh, fatty acids as energy fuel during the later stage of the race. And also have a higher uh, capacity um, for the fat oxidation, right? They, you know, have a high, um, the blood flow into the muscle, um, you know, the, the better the cardiovascular adaptation, so can increase oxygen delivery to the um, muscle and increase an oxidation, right, so fat oxidation, um, and have a less lactic acid produced um, during, particularly during the first hour of the race because of they have a less type of two X fibers, fibers are recruited, right? So this um, slide uh, just give us some in, uh, information uh, about uh, fuel utilization uh, between chain and unchain runners. Um, and a couple of things are, are different. First, the, uh, you, if you look at this uh, uh, diagram, uh, the y-axis x, y -ax -axis is the oxygen uptake, right? You know, that related to oxygen consumption or oxygen capacity. So uh, chained Runners have higher oxygen uptake or higher oxygen consumption or higher uh, oxidative capacity compared to unchained, right? Um, and because of, you know, the cardiovascular adaptations. And we're going to talk about later, you know, other adaptations uh, also occur in the muscle that will all increase the oxygen, uh, ox oxidative capacity in the muscle. And, and secondly, the, um, in terms of the uh, fuel utilization, uh, if you can see here, the unchained utilize more carbohydrate, less fat as energy during the exercise. Uh, for example, 75% um, of energy actually um, is, comes from the carbohydrate, right? Oxidation, um, uh, utilization, and only 25% from the fat. And if you compare to the chain, um, people that um, chained runners almost be able to utilize 50-50, uh, right? 50% 50 of fat and 50% carbohydrate. So chained um, runners are able to utilize more fatty acids as an energy fuel, which is very important, particularly in the later stage of 
of race, right? So, so more utilize, utilize more fat, fat to allow uh, them be able to save the glycogen and for the use as a later stage of exercise, right? So this is very important. And then the uh, second and uh, the last thing is that the uh, ox the metabolism of glucose is also quite different. Uh, in the unchained uh, runners, the glucose mostly uh, be partial oxidized through the glycolysis pathway and produce a more lactic acid, which causes the fatigue, right, and the affect the performance and the exercise. Um, and for the chained runners, and um, glucose usually be more complete oxidized and produce less lactate right, um, compared to the unchained. So for this kind of reason, you can see that the, um, you know, the chained runner can perform better because of the, you know, the fuel utilization is different, um, particularly fat utilization is increased in, in chain runners and um, increase the oxygen delivery and uptake delivery and oxidative capacities increase and also um, that leads to more uh, glucose go to the complete oxidation and less um, lactate, lactate acid produced. Um, so this is kind of different, you know, between chain and unchained runners and in terms of the um, uh, fuelization and metabolism, and that will significantly affect the performance. Um, and also uh, the basis for this difference is actually uh, muscle fibers, right? So the type of muscle fibers that are recruited uh, in the chain and unchained runners are different. So for example, chained runners have a more type one fibers, which is oxidative fibers, right, aerobic fibers, and the less type two X fibers are recruited. And, and for the unchained and muscle fibers usually, um, uh, you know, a more uh, type two X and less type one a fibers that are good. So that makes a big difference, right, in the energy fuel metabolism in chain and unchain. But after chaining, the muscle fiber composition can also be changed. Um, and this is just more information about uh, the uh, fuel utilization uh, before and after chaining. Um, if you look at the bottom, um, panels, um, the total energy utilized by the muscle is uh, actually not, not different between ch before and after training. And they pretty much use, this, use the same energy for exercise. But the fuel utilization, the you know, type of uh, uh, the uh, energy fuels utilized by the muscle is changing you know, a lot before and after training. For example, the fat utilization, you see after training, the fat utilization is increased right, compared to the um, people before training. And uh, carbohydrate utilization is actually uh, decreased, right, um, you know, compared to the before training. So after training, fat utilization is increased because of uh, oxygen consumption uptakes, it can be increased, and uh, also the capacity is increased, right? Um, but decrease the uh, carbohydrate utilization. So it can save the carbohydrate glycogen, muscle glycogen for the use during the finishing, you know, uh, time of the game, the very latest stage of the exercise or, or game. Um, okay, now let's talk about the utilization during post-exercise recovery period. So what happens, um, you know, to the few or concentrations or the, uh, the levels after exercise? 
what 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 do you think the um, what about the levels of uh, glycogen storage after after exercise bef compared to the before exercise? It should be decreased, right? So after after a uh, uh, game, a uh, lot of glycogen uh, actually uh, was used. Um, so you have a uh, almost have a uh, um, depletion of uh, muscle glycogen. So muscle glycogen is depleted after uh, exercise, and also the glucose fatty acids, um, you, you know, during the exercise are taken up by the muscle for use, use energy. Um, and insulin sensitivity in muscle is increased. That means so, um, the glucose uptake should be increased into the muscle during you know, after exercise, uh, which is very important. Right? So the main goal uh, of our body is to re, uh, rebuild glycogen store, right? Glycogen store in the muscle is very important, is the, the main uh, goal after exercise. So insulin sensitivity increase is good. You can push more glucose into the, into the muscle and to, for the synthesis of uh, glycogen. So, so this is, 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 is type of the adaptation, you know, after exercise, insulin sensitivity increase. Um, and what is the major source of the fuel uh, that be used during the first eight hours recovery? Recovery, even uh, you know, we give a um, high uh, carbohydrate meal. What do you think? The what is the priority our body is to do in terms of a fuel utilization? You know what about the f uh, the the um, the major f major fuel utilized by the muscle after exercise or in the first eighteen hours of recovery period? Even we give them, you know, very high carbohydrate diet, fat, right? Oh, you already said that. Sorry, I. <laughs> So fat, all right. So why we why why would body use the fat? Even we have a lot of carbohydrates available, you know, after exercise. We wanted to rebuild glycogen, right? So we spare the glucose um, for the glycogen resynthesis. So during this early period of recovery time that our body tended to use more carbo um, sorry, more fat as an energy fuel and save the gl glucose for glycogen synthesis. So, so in order to do this, the um, glucose oxidation and pyruvate dehydrogenase activity are uh, all decreased. So then allow the body to use less glucose, right, for energy. I mean, uh, yeah, and, and glucose be, again, the safe for the glycogen resynthesis. Um, and in addition to glycogen uh, depletion, we also depleted the um, intracellular, uh, intramuscular um, triglyceride levels, right? We also use a lot of triglyceride for energy during exercise. So we also need to, to replenish the um, intracellular triglyceride triglyceride in, in the muscle. So this will uh, happen within the 48 hours of recovery period. So we need to rebuild glycogen first, which can be finished during the first 24 hours. And then we also need to re rebuild the uh, triglyceride right, within the 20, 48 hours of recovery. Um, Okay, now let's talk about anaerobic metabolism. So anaerobic metabolism, we know that is the uh, you know very short period of time and high intensity, right? Um, 
type of exercise and requires a lot of energy in a very short period of time, for example, 10 seconds for the 100 meter sprinting. This type of exercise um, happened very quick, quickly and you know, in very short period of time. Um, and that means we need to, uh, why this type of exercise is anaerobic? We explain a little bit of reason, right? Because you know, in this very short period of time, oxygen will not be able to quickly deliver to the muscle to increase uh, oxidative metabolism. Um, so, the so the question is that how is ATP uh, generated for this uh, immediate use? You know, uh, during this short period of time. So of course, the one is the most important thing is we need to use the intracellular, intramuscular fields, right? That already been inside of muscle cells, so it can be immediately used for energy, um, and not the uh, energy field from the other sources. And secondly, is the intramuscular glucose stores. Is very important, and also creating phosphate. So again, the aerobic anaerobic metabolism, metabolism utilizes intramuscular glucose and uh, creating phosphate. And how glucose is metabolized during the this 100 spring exercise? It's anaerobically, right? Glucose, because of, you know, don't have enough ox oxygen for complete oxidized glucose. So glucose basically is uh, partial oxidized through the glycolic pathways and generally lactate. So again, for anaerobic exercise, the example for anaerobic ex exercise is the 100 meters sprinting. Um, and the fuel, energy fuel for anaerobic exercise are intramuscular glucose. That basically is the glycogen, right? From the glycogen, and also uh, creatine phosphate. And glucose is partial oxidized to lactate. Oh, here. Uh, a couple questions. So is fat the main fuel for ATP production during an aerobic exercise? It's not, right? Because again, you know, not enough oxygen for oxidative metabolism, for oxidized fatty acids. Second question, uh, does liver glycogen store affect ATP production in anaerobic exercise? Liver glycogen for example, compare one person have a higher uh, liver glycogen store and the other person have a lower uh, liver glycogen store. Do you think that will affect the must I mean the anaerobic size? No. Question, the answer is right. No, because um, glycogen breakdown from the liver and then deliver to the muscle also requires time, right? It will not going to happen within the 10 seconds. So liver glycogen will not be the important sources of glucose for um, the anaerobic exercise. And muscle glycogen store, of course, affect ATP production, right, in aerobic exercise. And, and creatine phosphate levels in the muscle also affect the ATP production and aerobic exercise. All right. So the energy source uh, during anaerobic exercise, creating phosphate and the glucose. So glucose can be from glycogen breakdown and also dietary glucose that already be in the circulation and can quickly take up by the muscle for energy use, right? So glucose can be from two sources for the anaerobic exercise. One from 
muscle glycogen breakdown and the circulating glucose, which usually from the diet, right? So you already we need the circulation. Um, and the creatine phosphate is the energy fuel I usually use for the first few seconds. So the muscle utilizes the creatine phosphate because it's very quick to break down and, and to provide ATPs, right? This is a reaction for creating phosphate. Um, how creating phosphate generally ATPs? So because this reaction, chemical reaction can happen very quick. So, so that's the reason why the uh, muscle will use crea creating phosphate first during the first sec few seconds. And, and you know, breaking, breaking down uh, muscle glycogen or uptake glucose from circulation probably also requires some time, right? So, so then glucose uh, becomes the major energy fuel, if, you know, um, the later. So where does creatine come from? Um, I don't think you guys need to remember this uh, whole reaction process, but just, just you know that the um, amino acids, uh, arginine and glycine, and are the two amino acids that are used for synthesis of a um, creatine, right? So creatine basically is synthesized in the body uh, from um, arginine and uh, glycine uh, in the liver, pancreas, and kidney. And once it's synthesized, then it's transported to the muscle and stored in the muscle. And creatine can also be um, obtained from the, from the diet. You know, certain type of food and also have a higher levels of creatine. So, um, you know, like salmon and tuna, beef also contain some, you know, creatine, uh, can be the sources of uh, creatine. <coughs> and this uh, uh, diagram that show us, you know, the food utilization in the anaerobic metabolism, as I mentioned, that creatine will be the first uh, energy, right, utilized during the first, for example, first the two or three seconds during the exercise, the muscle utilized mostly the creatine phosphate as the energy. And after uh, three seconds, um, you see the glucose utilization will be a significant increase, right? So creatine phosphate is used up during the first few seconds, and then glucose will become the most important, the uh, energy fuel for the rest of the uh, period, period uh, uh, exercise period, right? Um, and glucose is metabolized anaerobically in the um, muscle during anaerobic exercise. You see, and this you guys already know, right? You know, glucose being um, glycolic, oxidized through glycolic pathway to pyruvate and converted to lactate. If if pyruvate cannot be uh, further oxidized in mitochondria, Right, scale muscle adaptation in response to training. So we mentioned that training is very important, can increase oxygen um, consumption, uh, increase the uh, exercise effect utilization, right? Um, so here are a couple of things that can, can be changed after training, which is very important, uh, connect to the um, the performance, the better performance. First is the cardiovascular adaptations. After training, that uh, we can increase the cardiac output, increase gas exchange, 
exchange, so increased oxygen uh, you know, uptake. And it's also increased capillary density in the scale muscle, so you have a more, more uh, in, you know, the blood vessel in the muscles that will allow the more um, blood be flowed into the muscle. So that will help the, uh, increase the uh, oxygen delivery. So all this um, cardiovascular adaptations can increase oxygen delivery to the, to the uh, scalp muscle. And a second important thing that happened inside of the scalp muscle is the mitochondria unit, the mitochondria number has also increased. We know the mitochondria is very important, right? So you, you have to, if, in order to do the better um, oxidative metabolism, the cell, cells have to um, have a higher oxygen levels and also higher uh, mitochondria numbers, right? So be able to uh, increase oxidative metabolism, increase beta oxidation of fatty acids, and so that will uh, allow muscle uh, to increase, increase uh, uh, reliance on the fat utilization, right? To be able to utilize more fat as energy, and, and so that will again, you know, uh, decrease the reliance um, on the carbohydrate utilization, particularly during the, you know, the uh, later stage of uh, exercise. Um, and that will also reduce the lactic uh, production. Even for uh, glucose utilization, you know, most of glucose being actually uh, completely oxidized, right? So you have a less uh, lactate pr produced. And also, uh, uh, training can increase the muscle glycogen stores, right? This is also very important. Uh, all right, so now let's talk about the carbohydrate loading. Um, we mentioned earlier that the uh, carbohydrate store, the, the, or glycogen store is very important. So um, that can affect the performance, right? Because the later stage, you know, uh, muscle uh, really need to uh, you, you utilize the uh, carbohydrate, glucose as energy because of the fat utilization decrease. Um, so in order to increase the uh, uh, performance, the carbohydrate loading is important. Um, so the most efficient way to increase carbohydrate loading is the um, high carbohydrate diet, right? So eating carbo, you know, eat more carbohydrate to, to to increase the carbohydrate store in the in the body, um, yeah. Okay, so um, here's a question. So can we know that carbohydrate diet is the most most efficient uh, way to increase? Glycogen store, um, and can a carbohydrate can high fat diet help the build the muscle glycogen? No, right? I think it's answer is no. So let's look at the um, the, the the evidence, right? So some people did the experiment to prove that whether uh, which type of diet is the most efficient for the uh, carbohydrate loading or for increasing carbohydrate, uh, 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 glycogen uh, stores. Um, so I think in 1967, a group of scientists uh, did the experiment to make sure that how much carbohydrate is needed for increasing the car carbohydrate and store or glycogen store. Um, and glycogen store increase is important, right? If, if we don't have much glycogen store, and particularly during the later stage of race, then we're very easy to get exhausted right? because of your lack of energy. Um, 
So what what this what they did is the um, uh, design experiment to have a three groups of people and give the three groups a different three different type of diet. Uh, first group um, group of people were given a high fat diet, which means that the energy eighty percent of energy uh, of total energy comes from the uh, fat. And the second group is, uh, was given a, um, a normal diet contain the 55% uh, of energy from the carbohydrate. Uh, and the last group is a high fat diet, uh, sorry, high carbohydrate diet contain 82% right, energy uh, that from the carbohydrate. And here's the result. So you can see that um, black bar represents the high fat diet group, and red uh, is the normal diet group, and green the high carbohydrate diet group. Um, and x axis is the uh, the muscle glycogen levels. So how much glycogen? be able to store in the in the body after a three I think a, the three days yeah three days experiment right we fed this different type of diet for three days and then look at the um, muscle glycogen levels in two different in, in three different groups of people and the y axis is the uh, time to the exhaustion um, so you can see the high fat diet group have a less um, muscle glycogen stores, I only about like 90 gram of glycogen be able to store after three days of uh, feeding. Um, and it's very easy to get exhaust, right, you know, like 50, 60 minutes, um, the exercise and be able, very easy to get exhausted. And the normal diet um, group be able to get the uh, about uh, 200 or 180 um, gram of uh, um, muscle glycogen and the uh, time to exhaustion about uh, um, 111 minutes, right? Um, and last group, the high carbohydrate diet, you can see can increase significantly, right? The um, muscle glycogen are kind of you know, around 400 gram. Um, glycogen and the time to exhaustion significant increase. So you can, you know, exercise for uh, about three hours, then you start to feel exhaustion. So, so this uh, ex experiment gave very clear, um, you know, an evidence that the high carbohydrate diet definitely is the most efficient diet that can significantly increase the glycogen store right, and reduce the exhaustion time. So um, this is very important to improve the performance. All right, um, I think I'll just finish the couple of us. Maybe we have two, yeah, two more slides. And then we have a, a question. Uh, you mean the, uh, yeah, 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 for, for glycogen, uh, I mean store, yes. Uh, oh, this, yeah, this, this, this experiment for the, for the, like, the long-term exercise, it's not for the short-term. But I think for short-term, uh, glycogen store is, is important. Um, but because I, you know, compared to the long-term endurance exercise, the, uh, I think endurance exercise glycogen is more important, right? But short-term, just 10 seconds, um, probably will affect, but I don't think it will affect that a lot. Maybe the creating, uh, creating fast fat level is, is more important than the, the glycogen, uh, you know, levels. Um, Okay, so the 
So we're talking, here we, we're going to talk about the approach, the, the different approach uh, we can use to increase muscle glycogen store or, or the carbohydrate loading. Um, first approach, we can use, uh, you, we can give a, a very high carbohydrate diet uh, during the, um, you know, the, the, the recovery period, right? Um, so give like a, a one or two days of rest or reduce exercise training during this time period, then we give a very high carbohydrate diet, uh, more than 50% of you know, energy intake. And the second approach, um, we can give them a carbohydrate meal and just a couple hours and before, before games or before race and depend on the, the, the duration of the uh, games or, or exercise. So if type of a, an exercise or game less than two hours, then we usually give a, a carbohydrate that are more like digestible. For example, we just give kind of a spot drink so that you know we, we can get glucose quickly from the diet and be able to utilize during the uh, exercise, right? So if the gain uh, is longer than two hours, uh, then usually we can give them like solid, uh, you know, product like a bread or banana or energy bars. So um, that because this uh, solid product will, will a little bit delay in terms of uh, digestion absorption, right? So you will be able to get glucose into the circulation to the body. So, so this is the second approach that we also can give the carbohydrate diet just a couple hours before the uh, game. And the third approach, um, we also be able to give the carbohydrate during the race, during the, um, you know, the exercise, for example, during cycling and marathon running, and we, we also can, you know, drink like energy, uh, a sport and a, a drinking, right? Mm. Any questions about the, this? I think it's pretty straightforward, right? And some other type of uh, um, exercise, you know, a kind of combination, you know, into intermittent, uh, in intermittent uh, high intensity sports, you know, you have, uh, combine the low intensity exercise and repeated the uh, short distance uh, sprint, sprint, you know, this kind of type of exercise, we also can give a, a carbohydrate containing drinks, you know. Um, and the purpose of this, we can save some, again, you know, um, gly muscle glycogen, right, and for the last couple of, of minutes or, you know, the, uh, uh, the four, four speed sprinting at the end of the game or something like this, you know, just try to, um, you know, allow the uh, body to have a more muscle glycogen at the end of the game, which is need, very important and needed for the uh, finishing, right? The, uh, uh, I think uh, we pretty much done the uh, materials and um, the following slide, I think, about the questions, I pretty, pretty much kind of review. Um, do you guys want to take a couple minutes break and then we come back, or we can finish, you know, the, all the uh, sort of review slides and then finish? Okay, so let's just go ahead. Um, so question for discussion. Um, so what difference would you expect between recreational and elite marathon runners in the following metabolic characteristics? So first, the type of uh, muscle fiber. So what type of muscle fibers uh, that, that is more recruited in the recreation runners versus elite runners? Do you guys remember I just talked? 
Yeah, recreational will, will, will have a more type of 2x fibers, right? Particularly during the first hours of uh, running compared to uh, the elite. Um, and the second, the types of exercise or metabolism. For example, capacity of aer aerobic or anaerobic metabolism. What do you think of recreation runners versus uh, compared to elite runners? They should have a higher aerobic or anaerobic metabolism. Anaerobic, right? Because they have a less, they have a lower oxidative capacity. Okay. And what about the capacity of utilizing fat? Which runners utilize more fat? Elite right, runners, because they have a higher oxidative capacity, so be able to utilize more fat. And in terms of production of lactic acid, which runners produce more lactic acid? Recreation runners, right? And because they more tend to be more anaerobic you know, uh, metabolism, so produce more lactic acid. And muscle glycogen content, which runner type of runner have a more glycogen stored? Elite, right, have a more glycogen stored. Okay, so next slide. Uh, what difference would you expect between marathon and sprinting runners in the following metabolic characteristics? So marathon, sprinting, right, one is the, marathon is the uh, aerobic exercise, right? And sprinting is anaerobic exercise. First type of uh, muscle fibers recruited In marathon runners, you will expect more type one fibers, right? And sprinting runners, you will expect to have more type two X fibers. And second, type of exercise or metabolism. What type of exercise marathon does? And aerobic, right, metabolism and sprinting is anaerobic metabolism. And capacity of, uh, yeah, we just talked about it, aerobic. And capacity of fat utilization. High in marathon. And what about sprinting? Sprinting runners be able to use, use fat for energy? No, during exercise, right? Only use creatine phosphate and the glucose and lactate production. Of course, sprinting runner, right, produce more lactate during exercise. And type of energy fuse, what type of energy fuse does marathon runners use? Both, right, you know, carbohydrate and fatty acids. Um, and we also mentioned during the early stage of running for marathon runner, uh, utilize more carb, right? And the later stage, utilize more fatty acids as energy for the marathon runner running. And sprinting runners utilize what type of energy fuse? Creating phosphate and glucose, right? And what type of diet recommended prior to competition for both marathon and sprinting? Carb, always carbohydrate, right? For both. Okay, now the next slide. Uh, what is the average of increased fat oxidation due, sorry, 
What is the advantage of increased fat oxidation during exercise? What is the advantage? Yes, thank you. So just want to spare glycogen store, right, for the later, for the use during the later stage of exercise. And next question, what are the benefits of endurance uh, training? How does skeletal muscle adapt to endurance training? You know, how does the, I'm, I'm just talking about this question, basically asking for, asking about the, um, the physiological adaptation. Remember one slide that we talk about three main things, right? First is the carbohydrate, right? Uh, sorry, the cardiovascular adaptation, right? The increase, you know, cardiac output, increase the oxygen uptake, and increase uh, vessel density in scat muscle. And second, increase, yeah, type one muscle and, and mitochondria numbers, right? Type one we know is uh, uh, oxidative fibers that have a higher mitochondria content, right? And last, glycogen store, muscle glycogen store, right? So these three things are very, factors are very important, and you know, the, uh, for endurance training. Okay, so nec next question, where do fatty acids come from during aerobic exercise? From adipose tissue mostly, right? And also, uh, we talk about three sources actually, remember? Adipose tissue, liver release, uh, release triglycerides through the VLDL, right? And then the intramuscular triglyceride stores. And how are fatty acids metabolized during anaerobic exercise? How are fatty acids metabolized? Oxidation is the only way, right? It's the only way, you know, fatty acids is metabolized to produce energy. Oxidation. So oxidation requires oxygen and requires mitochondria content numbers. Um, okay, so now the last question for this slide. Can fatty acid be used for energy during anaerobic exercise? No, why not? because of the oxygen, oxygen, right? So not able to deliver quickly for the oxidative metabolism. Okay, next slide. So what is RQ and what do different values of RQ represent? What does it mean to have an RQ of 0.7 or 1. Remember this <coughs> RQ? So RQ is a way to measure the fuelization. So based on the RQ values, we are able to tell what type of energy fuel the scale muscle use during exercise. So what, what the um, 0.7 RQ means to you? is fat, right? So if muscle utilizes 100% uh, of fat, the RQ is 0.7 and 1 for 100% um, of carbohydrate utilization. So, okay, next question. So what would you expect the RQ to be for an elite runner after two hours of running compared to a recreation runner? Little bit complicated, right? So um, first of all, you need to thinking, uh, you know, compare the 
RQ value between recreation and LE boundaries. What do you what do you think the RQ value will be? Which boundaries should have a higher RQ value? Recreation runner should have a higher RQ values, right? Why? Yes, because recreation runner have a lower capacity capacity to utilize utilize fat and utilize more carbohydrate compared to the elite runners, right? So for this question, that if the recreation runner have a 0.8 and or 0.85 RQ and LE runner should have a lower or higher, less than less than 0.8, right? 0 0.7, 0 0.75, yeah, right. So just you know this. I think type of questions is also, you know, important. You guys need to uh, be able to um, estimate based on the uh, RQ value, all right, and make a comparison. You know, a, a runner or recreation runner, and before and after, you know, early stage of training and uh, exercise, and later stage exercise, based on the, the difference of periodization. Okay, so I think I pretty much all I have for today. Uh, do you guys have uh, any questions um, about uh, materials and also about the final question? Um, <coughs> you, you know, I my uh, uh, office is always open. That if you guys have a question, feel free to stop by and ask any question. Or oh, we have a, f a final quiz right back. So uh, I'm going to post uh, the key for quiz today. We have a six and seven. But uh, you have a question? Oh, the format for finals? Yes, uh, uh, same format. We uh, multiple choice and the uh, four choose, right? Selections. And I think we have uh, 80 questions. A little bit more questions than usual. Okay.